I want y'all just giving him everything you have. Forget your worries, forget your troubles. What's that song we used to sing? Brittany has a backpack. What's that jungle book? The bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your troubles. Jesus is the bare necessity. And if you, you know, y'all know the deal by now. These books somewhere sitting out there, just grab one. It's our official hymn book at the well. We're going to sing and worship the Lord. I am so excited. We're going we're gonna to sing number 142 in the songbook if you want to follow along. Number 142, the blessing. Oh, yes. Let's just worship God this morning and just come together and praise Him. Again, number 142 in the book, The Blessing.
You sing that amen because the amen means so be it. Everything you just sang, you're saying so be it. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And then when you say amen, you're saying so be it. I receive that. Thank you, God, for the peace, for the blessing. Thank you, Jesus, for that blessing. All right, we're going to uh, go way back in the book uh, to number 47, uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Again, number 47 in the book, Open the Eyes of My Heart. We're going way back. Yeah, we're going back. Old school. This might be the 90s. That's all right. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy.
more time. Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Jesus. Holy, holy are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy and worthy. We just want to see you lifted up and exalted on high, Jesus. Let's just set that in our hearts that we just want to exalt and lift him high this morning. Above all else. Above all else. Have you ever been deep in prayer? And you're so longing to see him that you just ask him, Lord, I want to see you. I've done that in my bedroom and I'm so longing for him. I say, Lord, I just want to see you. I've not had that kind of vision of him yet. But one day, but one day, we're all going to see him. If we know him and we've entered into that relationship with him, we're going to see him. And we're going to cry, holy, holy, holy. To you, Lord, to you, Lord. I want to sing number 151 in the book now. Move your heart. Because that's just what I'm feeling this morning. I'm just feeling such a sweet spirit. And again, this is number 151 in the book. Move your heart. And that's just what I want to do this morning. I just want to move his heart. Stand in awe 
Is it a fragrance that now poured by your heart? Is it a life laid down? Then here I give my vows. Is it a song I sing? Then is every melody just tell me what moves you? Just tell me what moves you. Oh, is it a fragrance then I'll pour my oil out? Is it a life laid down? Then here I give my vows. Is it a song I sing? Then is every melody just tell me what moves you? Tell me what moves you. As we sang that song, it was quickening to me that I forgot to do what I had said I was going to do every time we met under the tent, which is start the service with everybody just coming up to the altar in unity and just either singing or just praying. And it hit me. I forgot to do that. And I began to pray as we sang that song. What do I do, Lord? Do I do it now? Do we sing a song? What do I do? And right then, I don't know who all felt this, but y'all felt that? They came to me and gave me the answer. God is so good. He gave the answer through telling them that they feel like people need to get flags. Do you feel like more than just these three? No, the ones that... The ones that were up here, yes. She, yes. She said the ones who, who, you know, had felt to come up here and get the flags, stand right here. Do you feel like they should just pass before? Can, can we meet here? What are we doing? That's it. That's it. Perfect. God gives all the answers. She was talking about the colors of the flags. Worship flags were biblical, so don't we won't even go there. They're biblical. So the yellow, you know, here's red, here's white for surrender. What color is that, Debbie? Purple? That's our victory flag. What's that, Brooklyn? What is that? Navy? So we've got um, we've got the worship flags here. And I really did feel like the young ones should come up and join. So this is it. So what I, and he's praying in the spirit already. If you, if you haven't figured it out yet, you're in a church that believes in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit. This young man was baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's praying in the Spirit. Means he's praying in other tongues. The Spirit is giving utterance. So when you pass through here, anybody, now you don't have to, but we're asking that people would just walk by, pass beneath the flags, and then stay here. Just for a little bit of time, just for us to pray. And I'll... I'll be one of the first. I want to pass through what these flags represent. Belinda, what do you feel like that represents? She feels like that one down there is healing. The yellow one is the glory of the Lord. Here's the blood of Jesus. Here's the Holy Spirit surrendering to the Holy Spirit. This is the King Jesus. This is victory in King Jesus right here. So when you pass beneath those, believe you're receiving the healing, that you're walking in the glory of God, that you're covered by the blood of Jesus, that you're, so high, that you're surrendering by, to the Holy Spirit. We have the victory through Jesus Christ. Believe this when you walk under it. If it seems like we're going places we've never been Like we've left or we know to chase a voice on the wind We're not lost, we're just looking for you If it feels like we've lost our composure and pride If it feels like we've laid our restraint to the side If we seem desperate, it's just cause it's true if you're looking for a city, for a place to show your glory, 
look no further, we're available. If you're searching for a people who are hungry for a Bible, look no further, we're Like your kingdom's all we're talking about. If it sounds like we've tuned all the other noise out, we're just listening. We're just listening for you. And if our praise and our prayer seem outrageous and bold, if our worship gets too big for this building to hold, we're not making a show. We're just making room. If you're looking for a city, for a place to show you glory, look no further, we're available. If you're searching for a people who are hungry for revival, look no further, we're available. We volunteer. We volunteer to be the place you pour yourself out. We volunteer, we volunteer for whatever you need. We volunteer, we volunteer to be the carriers of your glory. We volunteer, we volunteer for whatever you need. Make this the time. Make this the place, make us the people. Make us the time, make this the place, make us the people. Make this the time, make this the place, make us the people. Just help us declare that. Make this the time, make this the place, make this the people. I feel to tell you right now, like just like to echo what she said, it doesn't matter what where you've been. Yes. I don't care if you were yes. shooting up drugs right before you came to church this morning. Right. I don't care what it is. Right. There's no place you've got to get yourself to to be able to surrender to God and say, I'm just not there yet. Like that's just not me because I'm not like them yet. That's a lie of the devil right. to hold you back. That's
that's a lie of the devil to hold you back. So whether you're here this morning, whether you're watching the live stream or on YouTube 10 years from now, I'm here to tell you that it's a lie of the enemy saying, say yes tomorrow. Say yes today. And I don't care if maybe you feel like, well, I've said yes so many times before and it's never seemed to stick. And then I go back, say yes again today. Say yes right now when we pray this morning. Say yes to say, I'm available, God. Do whatever you need through me because he has. Here's the thing. You're not just on this earth to come to church on Sundays. You're on this earth for a purpose. Each and every single one of you has a God-ordained purpose that he knit in your mother's womb. As you were being developed in your mother's womb, he had a purpose and a plan for your life. And it's more than just coming to church on Sundays. It's more than just clocking in at your nine to five. I'm not saying that all of us are meant to sing on stages or preach in front of, of thousands, but God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Yes, yes. And he wants to see that manifest in your life. The best life you're ever going to live. You know, that's like the big saying is live your best life. You live your best life. The best life you can ever live is the life that Jesus Christ has for you. You will be the most fulfilled. You'll be the most at peace. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying you're not going to have to put in some effort sometimes when you don't feel like it. But you will. it will be the best. the best. It just will be the best. There's no comparison. No, no comparison. No. So as we pray this morning, yeah. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're going through right now. Don't let the devil talk you out of saying yes to Jesus yeah. this morning yeah. like you've never done before. volunteer, Lord. We make ourselves available for whatever you need. We are willing to be willing and if we're not, Lord, then I pray that you make us willing to be willing. Lord, we just lay it all down to you, God. What do you want us to do? We want to let it echo, God, from this city, from Wanaka. We will hallelujah. Wanaka is a city available for you, God. I want the jolly card to be you, God. I want people to come like in Field of Dreams when they just come in those cars to that field that they come in and want to come, God, for you. For you, because there's a boom of God calling in this city that people hear about it all over the world. They say, I got to go to Wanna Cove. I don't know why, but I got to get to Wanna Cove. But when they get here, God, they will know it was you. They will know it was you, God. Hallelujah. And we are a people available, God. For that move of your spirit in this town. Hallelujah. Jesus, we want it to echo, to let it echo. Let it echo from this city to the nations. The sound of praise. It is right now. Let the windows of the Let it echo from this city to the nations, the sound of praise. Let the windows of the heavens open wide and let it for being obedient to what the Lord is doing. And if you ever wonder why we don't separate the young people from the adults during this service, this is why. They help lead the service. I'm not condemning anybody else. 
Every church can be led a different way, but right here we've been led to keep the young people with the adults because they help lead worship sometimes, oftentimes. Thank you. You can, you can go back to your seat or you can stay here. Follow the Holy Ghost. Don't be glued to that seat. If the Holy Ghost leads you to get up and get a flag and run around this tent in the middle of the sermon, do it. a beautiful morning. I can just feel there's such a peace. There's such a unity here. And I can feel that so strongly. And I want to tell you this. Don't take that for granted. Don't take that for granted. Um, I really felt something when we were here on Thursday. And I'm not uh, going to bring anything really long because I believe part of our church service today is going down to the farm and fellowshipping. Getting to know e each other. There's some of y'all I, I know, but I don't know. I know uh, Ethan likes the Yankees like I like the Yankees, but I don't, I don't know a whole lot about it. I know that Heather can sing like an angel, but I'd love to hear more about Heather's life. That's part of the fellowship of the body of Christ. So I believe us, when we leave here today and go down there, I believe we're not really adjourning the meeting, so to speak. We're taking it down there. And when I was here Thursday at the National Day of Prayer, we had a noon service and a 7 p.m. service here under the tent. I felt something very strongly. I felt, it's, it's interesting that I felt two different things that seemed to be opposites. I felt such unity. I felt this sweetness. And I was writing down how many different uh, church groups were here. We have Moravians, Independent Baptists, Southern Baptists, Pentecostals non-Pentecostal, non-denominational, uh, Methodist, Church of Christ, and I probably left out some, but that's the different types of people that we had here at the two different services. And I felt a unity. You know, no, I wasn't judging the Moravian when he came up here because he didn't do things just like me. And uh, the Independent Baptist guy wasn't judging the Southern Baptist lady who helped lead singing at the end. I didn't feel that at all. I felt a unity in the Spirit of God. But at the same time, I could feel, through the Spirit of God, I could feel the knowledge that there's a, dis, there's a division in the body of Christ. There's a lot of division in the body of Christ. There were groups who would not come meet with us, and I would never call a name. That's ugly. I'm not going to do that. I love everybody, whether they came or not. But there are groups that would not come and take part in the National Day of Prayer because we don't believe exactly alike. Well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's the only way to the Father. Amen. Now, if you don't believe that, we, we can agree to disagree, but I think I'm right. I know I'm right. The Word says I'm right. But the thing is, those are things we all had in common, the Moravians, the non-denominationals, the Pentecost. We all had that in common. The main thing is the main thing. Jesus Christ is the only way. Yeah. But I could feel with the unity, as I said, that in the body of Christ, there is division, and it should not be. I'm just going to be honest with you. It should not be. We, I like that. Thank you, man. Y'all talk back to me. I like people to preach oh, when I talk back. There you go. I remember going to conferences or different things throughout my Christian years where wherever I was, that group thought they were the only group. They're the only ones. Now, can you imagine when Jesus said, I want us all to be one? I'm not talking about a cult or something. I'm not talking about somebody that's preaching something cultish. Stay away from that. But can you imagine Jesus saying, hey, we're all one. I love you all. And we're all in the body of Christ together. Can you imagine seeing? I want you just to visualize this. Can you see the body of Christ? Can you literally see Jesus? And in him, the body of Christ, you got Pentecostals over here. You got the Southern Baptists over here. I don't know where you're going to put the Episcopalians or the Luther. I don't know where they are. Can you imagine that? That everybody is just, if we can't fellowship here on earth, what are we going to do up there? Don't get mad at me, but I'm about to say it. I think a lot of people who want fellowship down here may not be up there. 
I don't know. I can't judge that. That's God. That's totally up to him. I hope everybody makes it. The Bible says it's his will that all be saved. We know that it's, you know, unfortunately not going to happen, but it was his will that all be saved. The Bible tells us that. So I felt strongly this week after that Thursday service that we have to preach the unity of the body of Christ at this church for us to flow in the anointing and be blessed of God. And I'm going to prove that to you by scripture. Now, I ain't talking about unifying with everybody that's preaching crazy stuff. I'm not talking about that. But if you believe, don't raise your hand. If you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, I know, I looked at you, don't raise your hand. But if you believe in a mid-trib rapture or a post-trib rapture, there's some of y'all here that we all believe a little bit different on that. That's not, that should not separate us. There's some of y'all that believe different things about clothing. I have a lot of dear Christian friends who do not believe that women should wear pants. They don't believe that men should have facial hair. But we love each other. We have different beliefs on that, but those aren't essentials to get us to heaven. The Moravians have a, um, a motto, I guess you could say, and I asked for Pastor Chuck. I keep pointing because he was sitting there the other day. I was asking Pastor Chuck Harmon, the Moravian pastor, I said, what's that motto y'all have? And we had to think a while, but we finally got it. And I'm going to read you scripture to prove all this, but let's, I want to tell you what their motto is. In essentials, unity. In the essentials, Jesus Christ, him crucified, him being the only way, we got to have unity. And if you don't believe that, then we're not of the same body. So in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. The rapture. Uh, how to take communion. You know, there's different beliefs. How to take, some don't agree. Some won't come to a church service if somebody's doing communion the wrong way, they think. You know, these kinds of things are non-essentials. And then the final part of the motto, in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, you know what the next word is? Somebody call it out. In all things, love. Whether we agree with them or we don't, in all things, love. I really like that. I don't know what Moravian came up with that years ago, but I like that. Now, I'm going to read some scripture about this. I want you to turn, if you've got a regular Bible or phone, whatever, this is going to be the main text. There's going to be actually two main ones. John 17 is the first one. So we're starting with the New Testament because I want to hear what Jesus said about this. John 17. I'm going to start with verse 11, and then I'm going to skip down to 20. This was the background of this because it's important. It was Jesus' final speech. Before he went to be crucified. His final speech to his disciples. Now that's important. Somebody's last words at a certain time are important. When you parents leave the house and you tell your kids, don't you turn that stove on while I'm gone. Your last words are stuff you really want them to remember. Well, this was Jesus' last words before he went to be crucified to his disciples. John 17, 11. He's praying, actually. He's praying to the Father and says, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one. Somebody say one. one. That is important. That they may be one as we are. Then if you jump down to verse 20, he's still praying. He said, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me I have given them that they may be one just as we are one I in them and you and me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me we got to take this seriously, y'all. This was not just his words to the disciples. This was a prayer he prayed to the Father so the disciples could hear him praying it and the disciples would know this was his will. That we all be one. Did you see how many times? I was going to make y'all say one every time, but I didn't. Do you see how many times he said one? That, that I'm in you and you're in me and that they be one and they be perfect in, in one. One, 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 one. Now, I'm not talking about the one world order. There's coming a day 
in the end time that there's gonna they're gonna try to make like one world religion that's a whole different thing we're not talking about that we're talking about the gospel of jesus christ him crucified him being the only way to the father that's what jesus wanted us to be one in now it's interesting when you look at this this is a passage i think we need to read more often in our lives jesus is praying for us this is this is mind-blowing look at verse 20 Jesus is praying for you. You say, I wasn't born. That was whatever, 30 uh, AD. No, he was praying for you even then. How do we know? Verse 20 says, I do not pray for these alone, as in his disciples, but also for those who will believe in me. That's future. Those who will believe in me through their word. He was praying for you. He was praying for me and telling us that we all need to be one. Now, why is it crucial to have this unity? I want you to look at verse 21. Why is it crucial to have this unity? He said that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. The unity is crucial so that the world will believe that God really did send Jesus. That Jesus really was the Son of God. That Jesus really was who he said he was. He says when they when they see your unity, they're going to know, wow, that, that he really was sent from God. What do you think the world is thinking when they look at us right now? I think a whole lot of the uh, unchristian world is thinking, why would I want to be part of that? Yeah. They are divided. They don't even like each other. These different denominations don't even like each other. None of them think the other one's right because y'all don't dot this out like I do or cross this T like I do. I can't fellowship with you. Now, there's a different difference between partnership and fellowship. Sometimes I cannot bring myself to align um, into doing some kind of big thing with a group that I know is, is maybe not on the same exact path I am, but fellowship and believing that Jesus is the main thing and that we preach Jesus Christ, that's a whole different thing. I'm going to fellowship with them. I can remember, I have been, I've been, a, well, I'm getting older, so I've been a lot of different places and churches. I've been in a lot of churches where they will warn you not to go anywhere else. Don't you dare go anywhere else to visit for a revival. Don't you go anywhere else to visit for a special healing service. Now, I believe if you've got a home church, you'd be faithful to that home church. That's, that's part of the word as well. But I got no problem if you go somewhere to somebody's revival. Did you go to King? I don't know if you went to King, Lynn. Did you get to go to that? I didn't either. I, I, was, I was so torn. I didn't get to go. But Lynn and I had thought about going somewhere this weekend. If we'd gone, we would, it'd been okay, wouldn't it? Are we so scared that what we believe is going to be tainted if we go somewhere else? I'm, not, I'm talking about a church preaching Jesus. If they're, preaching, if they're not preaching Jesus, please stay away. But if they're preaching Jesus, why am I scared? Why, am I scared that y'all are going to go over there and uh, uh, start going to their church? Well, if you feel to go to their church, please go. Know it's God. Don't be a church hopper. Know it's God. Do it right. If you feel to go to another church, come to your preacher and say, Sister Leslie, I feel I'm supposed to do this. You know, and I'll pray with you and say, hey, I love you. No matter what, I love you. So there are standards for what we do, but I'm not scared if you go somewhere else. This fear thing is not of God. We are the body of Christ. Now, I want to stay with this verse, just these verses just a little bit longer. That what I just told you in verse 20 that says that verse, uh, that was 21. The salvation of others depends on our unity. It's repeated in verse 23. Verse 23 says that, the, again, that the world may know that you've sent me. But it adds something else to it. That the world may know that you sent me, Jesus said, and let's read the end of that exactly as it said it, and have loved them as you have loved me. Our unity proves that he loves us. It shows the world that, that God's favor is upon us, that he loves us, our unity. And I want you not to be thrown by a word there. There's a word perfect there. A lot of times in the Bible when people read that, they get a little bit thrown by it, like I could never be perfect. What does that mean? That word doesn't mean you have to do everything just right. What it actually means in the Greek there, that phrase made perfect, means completed. You know, I bet, and this is kind of corny, you know, but like my son and his beautiful wife, you know, I'm sure they would, that love that you complete me. You know how it is, 
when you marry somebody, you're like, oh, you complete me. That's the kind of thing it's talking about. It's saying that we can be completed when we are in unity. We can be complete. The body of Christ is not all one finger. It's not all one toe. It's not all uh, just a heart. The body of Christ is every body part. So every single church is not going to have exactly the same way they do things. Exactly, We're not a bunch of clones, we're, but we're in one mind. And we're in one accord. We're supposed to be. That's what Jesus wanted us to be. And I've determined we're going to do things here as much as we know to do. We're going to do what Jesus said to do. And he told us here that unity was key. Now, that is the New Testament, and there's more in the New Testament. But I want to jump back to another key scripture, Psalms. If you've got, again, a Bible or a phone, turn to Psalm 133. Who quoted this to me? Did somebody quote this to me about the oil that ran down Aaron's beard? Was it you, Megan? When was that and why? Was that recently? I failed to speak that over a meeting when they were praying for her one night. Oh, that's right. At a prayer night when Katie's mom was here, she felt to speak this over her. So let's read Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. We've done the New Testament. Here's the Old. Behold... How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. See that first word in that scripture? Behold, and we don't say that. I like it. I wish we'd throw that back in, you know, in our American usage. Like I come up to uh, Logan and I say, Behold, I have on a summer dress at last. You know, I wish we'd use that word, behold. Because what does behold mean? It means, hey, look. Hey, look, behold. So when, the, when the, he used this word, he means he wants you to pay attention. So he says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Do you feel that this morning, that unity? Man, I feel it. I feel it amongst us. And you know what it is? It's pleasant. When I look at all of y'all, I just feel this love of God. It's so pleasant when we dwell together in unity. Do we all agree on everything? We don't. Some of y'all like the Red Sox. I don't. You know, do, do we agree on, no, we don't agree on everything, but we can dwell together in the unity of him. Let's keep reading that again. So how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now, here we go. Now, I'm an old English teacher. I taught high school English for some years, and I had to teach literary techniques. Anybody remember metaphors and similes and all that kind of stuff? I say nods. I like that. Like, when you see the word like, it's a, it's a comparison. It's a simile. He is comparing this here. He gives you a picture that you can see. He said that unity is so beautiful that it's like Aaron, who was a high priest, and the oil when he was anointed. I feel that. That oil that just ran down his head when he was anointed, and it ran down his beard, and it went down on the, his robe. He said it's like that. Who I, I feel that. I don't know what it is about that, but the Holy Ghost is all in that. Where that oil just ran down Aaron. He said it's so beautiful. It's just like that. So you know what unity brings? It brings the anointing. Oh, it lets other people see the anointing of God on you when there is that unity. Because that simile, it is like that unity and that unified brotherhood is like the oil that ran down Aaron's head and his beard. But that's not all. Assembly, if you'll remember, had the words like or as. There's an as right here I want you to see. I want you to look at, um, this is going to be, I guess, verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Now when you look at that and you're going, Hermon who? This is not a Hermon who? This is Mount Hermon in Israel. This is a mountain at the northern part of Israel, and the Jordan River, y'all, comes from what flows off of Mount. Oh, I feel that too. The dew and the water and the snows upon Mount Hermon, when they melt, 
and come down into the valley. And they form, even the Jordan River gives it its water. And the other mountains in Israel, in Zion, the beautiful dews and waters that is upon that. Isn't that beautiful? I saw Chloe just lean her head back. That is so beautiful. She started just seeing that and feeling that breeze that we got going on out here. That's what I'm talking about. This unity of the body of Christ is pleasant. You just want to, don't you, sister? You just want to breathe it in. And it's like the dew on those mountains. Woo! That brings the life-giving water to you. He is that water that brings that living water to you. That's what the unity is, is like. It is as that dew that's on Mount Hermon. And we're not done. It says, for there, on those mountains where the life-giving water is, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. There God commanded the blessing. People of God, in unity, there's the blessing. God commands the blessing, even life forevermore. In that unity, we will never see the worldwide revival that we've longed to see if the churches stay in this division. Yeah. But you know what? The ones who come out of that division and say we're going to be in unity, they're going to see the revival. And others are going to wonder, why aren't we seeing it? Because the blessing and the anointing lies in what Jesus prayed, being one in the Father with Him. Now that is another key. We've got to be one with Him and the Father. And the body of Christ is part of what flows down from the Father. Now, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this. It's probably going to be a part two. But before I finish it out, I want to say just a little bit about the negative. And then we're going to jump right back to the positive. What's the opposite of unity? Division. The opposite of unity is division. That was something they warned about in the New Testament. You don't have to turn to this. Those other two are the main scriptures. But if you're taking notes, you want to study this out later. It's 1 Corinthians 1.10. 1 Corinthians 1.10. This is the Apostle Paul. He's not just saying. He's not just looking at the church going, Hey, y'all, I wish y'all do this. You know what he says at the very first? He said, I plead with you. If I look at y'all and I say, um, hey, Belinda, I wish you'd come down to Mama's today. It's a whole different thing than if I look at her and say, Belinda, please, please, Belinda, I plead with you, come down to Mom and Daddy's to eat lunch today. There's a difference. Paul is pleading. So it matters what he's about to say. He said, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment now Paul was talking about a specific situation that was going on in the Corinthian church and he was saying y'all need to get into agreement about this y'all need to be like minded about this let there be no divisions in you he would heard reports that there was divisions in this church I believe it was in the house of somebody named Chloe I'm not sure but he said there's some division I'm hearing about it See, he was the apostle who helped start that church so he could correct them. He's saying, there's a problem, and y'all need to get on one page. Well, I thought it was very interesting here that we know what divisions are. Things are torn apart. But that phrase, perfectly joined together, it's three words in English. It's one word in the Greek. Perfectly joined together means this. It means what y'all think. It means whole, complete. But you know what it also means? It means mended and repaired after damage. Wow. Don't you think about that. He said, I want y'all to be perfectly joined together. In other words, there's been a problem. There's been some damage. But they can be perfectly mended. Why is it that we think when there's a problem with the church or anything else, we, we are gone? It can't ever be mended. We're gone. I didn't agree with that, and I'm out of here. Now, if, they're doing, if I ever do something crazy, y'all come correct me. Come talk to me. Before you leave, come talk to me, please. But here's the thing. Even when there's been a division, things can be mended. Anybody out there believe in forgiveness? Yes. yes. If, we, if Jesus is all about forgiveness, we got to forgive each other sometimes when there's a disagreement. Y'all remember Peter and Paul in the Bible? Y'all, they about had a fight. 
there comes some rolling down the aisle. Wow, I wonder if there's any spiritual significance in that. I don't know. It's round unity. Anyway. It's blue. <laughs> royal blue. Here's the thing. They have, they have disagreements in the Bible. You're okay, brother. It's all right. There's disagreements in the Bible. You know what they did for a time? They split up for a while. Some of those disciples in the early days literally had some disagreements. You know, some said, we got to circumcise everybody. No, we don't. We don't have to circumcise the Gentiles. Yes, we do. No, we don't. They split up for a while. But I believe they made it right. Well, I believe we have biblical evidence that they made everything perfectly joined together again. That's what we're to do. In the body of Christ, we've got to preach that unity and that forgiveness when there is a rift of some kind. Meg, I know you're taking notes. Write this down and then if you will, come on up. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. I'll just read this. You can jot it down if you're taking notes. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. His plan was for us to be together. His plan was for us to be together. I can't live with y'all. Katie lives in Kings. I live in Danbury. Lodge and Logan live in Walnut Cove. We don't live, we're not all going to live together. We can't hang out every day together. But he gives us times that we can be together. And it's a time like this. It's a time like when we're going to mom and daddy's farm after this. He gives us these times. And I'm going to read the scripture, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're supposed to be getting together. This is exciting to me. We're supposed to be getting together more and more as we see the end of time approaching, because that phrase there, the day, as you see the day, that's capitalized in some versions, because the day means the end of time when Jesus comes back. So the closer, oh, I feel that, the more we get closer toward that day, we're supposed to get together more and more and more. I see the opposite trend in a lot of churches. I see churches not meeting as much. We don't. Back in the day uh, when I went to, uh, Katie and I went to church together. Who else? Heather, you were there after me. Who else went to Christ Temple? Just a few of us here. Man, I was there Sunday morning. I was there Sunday afternoon for choir practice. I was there Sunday night for Sunday night church, not just a Bible study, full on service. I was there Tuesday night for group prayer, and I lived 45 minutes away, y'all, from that church. Mm -hmm. And I was there for group prayer. I was there Wednesday night for Bible study and, and regular service. I was there sometimes Friday night for youth meetings. Sometimes we'd have a fellowship on Saturday. Now, don't get nervous. I don't feel to do all that here. I feel that you got a family at home you're supposed to be with, too. I feel like we're supposed to also spend times with our spouses, our children. I feel that too. So you're not going to have a pastor here who says, y'all going to be here every day. We're going to have something every day. No. If we have an occasional 40 days of prayer or a seven-day Daniel prayer, there might be a season. I say, hey, come on, let's meet. Let's meet every day for seven days. See what the Lord does. But I, I don't believe in ripping people out of their homes to come to church every day. But when we do have times to meet together, let's do it. Let's all meet together. Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, he says. And I'm not talking about just people who just don't come to church. I'm talking about there are people in this world, and I don't think there's any of y'all here. There's people in this world today that believe they don't have to go to any kind of gathering of the believer because they believe that they are the church. You've heard people say it, I'm the church. Church is not a building, I'm the church. No, you're not. You're part of the church. You are part of the church. The church is plural. The church ecclesia is a group, a collection. And I looked it up. I actually in the Greek wanted to see what all those words mean. The assembling is the word that looks like episynagogue. You, you people who know Jewish history know synagogues where they go to church. Episynagogue is not pronounced that way. But it's what it looks like. Because it means the collection of believers. Because how can I be the church if I'm just a little finger? I need Allison, who's the thumb. You know? I need Sean, who's the big toe. I need Chelsea, who's the liver. 
You know, we're all part of the body of Christ. And if I'm just this, I can't just function just that. Yes, I have Jesus. I'm with Jesus. But there is a big fallacy, especially in the uh, Pentecostal denominational ranks, right, non-denominational ranks right now, that I just do my own thing. Because I am the church. I can do my own thing. No, not according to the word. You can't. You're part of the body of Christ. And I believe that we come together in that unity. Elijah, yeah, whoever's going to sing, come on up. Because I'm closing out so we can go have more unity over there. But this is essential, people of God. This is essential. Megan, you can have my notes because I just see another scripture I really want to read as we close. How do you achieve that unity? How do you do it? How do I do it, you say? This, this unity of the, of the body of Christ. Well, we gather. We get to know each other. We gather. We support each other. But I want to read you a scripture that tells you more about that. Philippians 2, 2 through 4 says this. Philippians 2, 2 through 4 says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now, I'm not done. Here's how we treat each other to have that unity. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, I want y'all to get ready, buckle your seatbelts. This is how we're supposed to treat each other. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Humility is the key to this. Humility through God, through the Holy Spirit, is the key to this. That we look out for each other. That's what a body does. we got to quit thinking our opinion is the only one that matters. That our voice is the only one that matters. Well, that's why I love it when we come together that we can all speak up. Sometimes in the middle of a sermon, somebody says, Hey, Sister Leslie, what about this? That's the body of Christ and how it functions. In order. Mm. There's a scripture that says in Ephesians chapter 4, it says that we are to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know what that word endeavor means? It means you try really hard. You strive. We endeavor to keep that unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And that's what I pledge to you as your pastor. I felt to go this way today. A lot of times I hear a prophetic word. Last week I told y'all something God told me to ask y'all. I heard a word from God, and he said, ask y'all. This week, I didn't hear a word from him. I just felt within me that he wanted me to tell you that in this church, we're going to preach what Jesus said, unity in the body of Christ, that we be one. Oh, yes. That's the, that's the song right there, that we be one. And it's the perfect day to preach that when we have a church fellowship like we're going to have. So what I'm going to do, I've already given a, a, a call to repentance. But I'm going to tell you one more time, if you don't know him, you might believe in him. You might say you even love him. But have you surrendered your life to him? Have you been born again? If not, this is it. This is the time. Don't wait. Don't delay. Do it today. You can come up here and do it. You can do it at your seat. If you need prayer of agreement for that, please come let us pray and agree. If you need healing of anything, that unity in the pool, that unity in the body of Christ will pray over you for that healing. If you need anything from God, let the body of Christ agree with you. Come let us pray. Do you feel can you lead that song, Elijah, as we pray? And if you feel say something, say what you feel. At this church, we're preaching. Jesus wants us to be one, and we're going to be one. We're not going to get carried away with some wind of doctrine that's not of God. But we are going to stay in the Word, what the Word says. But we are going to have unity in the body of Christ that brings anointing, that brings blessing, that brings life. And that's what we want, right? Can I get an amen for that? Amen. That was half-hearted. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. Yes! Say it. Say it. What you feel? I don't, I don't, I'm just going to... 
I'm saying if people want to come up and pray, yes, yes. So what do you feel? I was feeling, I was almost feeling, because like this is our, I was asking her if we had a way to play it, because I like the version that we have, but we didn't have, we don't have our chords and stuff to play the play it on this, but uh, this song is our fellowship song that we've yeah. sang a lot, so I was, I was just thinking like, maybe like we sing it and like pray through like once, and then after we sing through one time and pray, then just when we sing through again, I'll say it, and just everybody go shake hands, introduce yourself. Uh, talk, whatever, but like, you know, fellowship and love each other because, again, we are a family, we are a body. So, again, I, let's just sing through it one time and, and then we'll sing through it again and everybody just fellowship. Yes. is a heel, so you should probably go the same so it's even higher. You should probably go on that for a while.
wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, his bad bones. And I try with all my mind, but I just can't. This way works.